we've talked a lot about taking ownership and once you know what you need to do, actually doing the work. Um, and we were chatting on email and you mentioned about the elephant and the rider, which mm -hmm. is a really great metaphor that I studied when I was um, doing my nutrition coaching certification. Mm. Um, and I think it's something that is a really nice concept to share. Yeah. So would you mind explaining that to the listeners and how that could be applied in this kind of scenario where you want to make a change and you know where you're trying to get to, but it's just not that easy. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, Jamie, you were saying it a long while back, but where these you know, just habits are in place and it's just trying to get the turn and shift on what's going on internally. But uh, the elephant and the rider, as far as I'm aware, it uh, it comes from some of the more Eastern philosophies. So whether it's uh, Chinese, ancient Chinese philosophies or in some of the Indian philosophies, but just the notion of you know, we've got very much this is accepted by general populace now, but that there's a conscious and a subconscious and that if we see the subconscious, all our programmed information, all our beliefs about ourselves, all the things that we do as habits, if we see that that's the programmed kind of beast underlying that, 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 that's the elephant. The elephant has had instruction, has been trained a certain way, come to operate a certain way, and that's what the elephant does. And the elephant's job is to keep things as consistent as possible and just keep going with what it's been instructed to do. And then the rider is the person who's got the brains. The, 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 the rider is the one with the, the capability to say, no, we don't always have to go down that track through the trees to the lake every morning at, at, at 10 o'clock. We could go there at 8 o'clock. And then we could get there, do that. And then after that, we could do this. Da, 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 da. We can change our sleep habits, our eating habits, our exercise habits. We can change so many things of what becomes routine and programmed but we've got to take the reins internally to change what would otherwise occur because the, habit, the habits that are set in that are enjoyable, even if they don't serve us so much, so they think, oh, I'll go to McDonald's on every Friday night, that's, that's what I do, or I have a certain amount of pints on a Saturday or a Sunday, and that's what I do. And mm -hmm. when those habits sit in contrast with what your goals are, we've got to be able to take the reins and redirect the elephant. But neurologically, it's there in the same way. Uh, the thing I really loved about this metaphor is elephants are really big <laughs> and really stubborn. Yeah, and, like, strong. Try and just push <laughs> an elephant out of the way and tell it what to do. It ain't that easy. Uh -huh. And so it really rang true for me why this is how people feel when I want to make this change, but I've got this bloody big elephant that won't do what I'm telling it mm -hmm. to do. Yeah. So how do you like crack the whip? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's when you start getting the carrots out, right? Because <laughs> they're cracking the whip. No, 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 no. The elephant doesn't like cracking the whip. Or you might get something out of the elephant of that, but you kind of, you, you, you beating Forced. it to make yeah. it. Yeah, it's never the most conducive relationship. And it's one of the beautiful things about the, the metaphor that it very much matters how the rider, how your own conscious cognitive thinking, how you treat your own internal self and, and your elephant because if you're kind of like abrasive and abusive to it and trying to make it do stuff, it'll resist you. But if you can turn that around and create the right draw, finding the right meaning, finding the right perspective of what you would like things to be like, that's then the carrot instead of the stick. And that's the way to do it. Like, how do we work with the elephant? How do we invite it towards things? We've got to create that the thing we're looking for it to do is actually good for us and good for it even if it's like you're not getting the taste sensation <laughs> on a Friday <laughs> evening and, and you're making yourself be a bit more disciplined, but you have to see that, but I will feel better. I will be better off physically, mentally, maybe financially. If I change these habits towards the good, the good will be better for me than that Big Mac. These things are so important. Um, but yeah, and I wanted to just try and say on the the neural anatomy that comes with the elephant and the rider is there. So the, the concepts have been around thousands of years, but to see the prefrontal cortex where a lot of willpower is seated, our conscious decision-making that comes at quite a high energy output, really. It's the first thing to go when we're stressed. It's the first thing to go when we're hypervigilant or if we're depleted, that prefrontal capacity to make choices, to determine where we're going to go, the stuff that sits. Yeah. Yeah. You your default. Yeah. Absolutely. So when you lose that through being excessively stressed, through being in a place where you just don't have the space and the resources to choose cleanly, that rider just gets taken out. And the elephant just goes back to the same old track down to the lake because mm. that's what it knows to do. Yes. 
that's, yeah, that, yeah. that would be why having your elephants, I guess, if that's the metaphor that we're using, <laughs> in the your where your default is healthy, you have healthy non-negotiables that you just do. Mm. So even when times do get hard or stressful, you're still your baseline is very high. Mm. That's that kind of how I see it because I, I will do crazy hours and work hours sometimes, but still I have like non-negotiables about exercise and how I eat and how I drink. It's just my mm. autopilot. So that never gets, you know, taken. So when things are highly stressed, I'm just still in autopilot, but keeping mm. things in a, a, a healthier way versus what I see with a lot of other people is when things then get really stressful, whether that's, and again, it can be some of the worst things that can happen to us sometimes. Mm. Their default goes into this just like pit yeah. of you know emotion and just mm. recklessness and self-sabotage because that's how they're sort of dealing with it and they've got no bandwidth to almost deal with uh, the issues that are going on yeah and what you talk about about your non-negotiables they took some training in yeah they, they, they took choosing mm -hmm. they took sticking to to the point where you found that you know what these are right for me these are worth keeping as non-negotiables take some discipline there's no doubt about it and yep. it's a useful thing to have a good relationship with commitment mm -hmm. and discipline instead of feeling like it's a, you know, it's a bad thing and I don't want to do it. When we get on track with commitment, get on track with discipline, we just become a powerful yeah. thing. 